Hey, what's up everybody? Got some more question and answer stuff, but first, look at this. I got this for Christmas. Isn't that awesome? It's my favorite guitar. It really is. Not, I don't know, you know. It really is my favorite, I just don't want to say. So check it out. Um, I do have a lot of questions from you guys. It's been a real, real busy month. December's been really, I mean, for obvious reasons. Um, so I'm trying to get to some of these questions. This one's from Elf Hermy. What's up, dude? Really cool dude, subscriber of mine. And he said, what are my most memorable albums? And man, so I actually um, wrote them down instantly because um, for just about every one of these, they were pivotal for me. And I can remember the excitement of first starting guitar and how these bands impacted me. And some of them before I played guitar. Well, two of them. Um, and I, I, they're kind of in order here, too. Um, there's a lot. I didn't count them. But there's probably about 12 or so. The, the first one I would say would be the Beatles, Abbey Road. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Beatles are my all-time all-time favorite band, never to be duplicated, and in my opinion, as far as songwriting, you know, Beatles kind of did it all, so did Zeppelin, by the way, which is my, like, right there, um, but they had the simple aspect, and then they also had a very complex aspect, if you listen to the White Album, and Sgt. Peppers, and, and um, the orchestration, just the genius of McCartney, and Lennon, and I like the whole package, man. I mean, Ringo, who you don't hear people talk about a lot, is actually a very, he's packed with character in his drumming. And George Harrison is George Harrison. They're, they're just all awesome. But, you know, Paul McCartney's kind of like my hero, him and Stevie Wonder. But, um, so yeah, I'd say the Beatles Abbey Road. I remember being a kid be before I played. My mom had this album and my, my um, older brother. <clears throat> so I was, you know, I was a little dude and just, I remember listening to Here Comes the Sun over and over, but I just, I, I couldn't get enough of the Beatles. And, uh, man, when Paul McCartney goes, you're going to see a grown man cry. That's how much I like the Beatles. Um, next um, would be Van Halen's first album, Van Halen 1, that had Eruption on it. And that one impacted me because um, that came out before I was playing, too. That came out in, I think, 79. And... Uh, hearing Eruption for the first time, at that point I realized, I know what I want to do. I want to be a guitar player. And Eddie's one of my all-time favorites, and, you know, obviously he's influenced every rock guitar player out there. Um, everybody. I mean, I've even heard Steve Vai say it. And uh, I love humble musicians. I don't, I'm not a fan of, you know, cocky musicians that just, you know, feel like they're everything, and you know, it's all about them. It's not. We're all the way I see it. I always want to improve as a player, and I'll never be the best in the world. So I'm always, I, sh I really, in theory, should be improving. And I love, I just love all styles, not just one. A lot of these are rock metal, you know, because that's kind of was what grabbed me as a youngster was the rock stuff. But within my first year of playing, I was venturing into lots of other styles, intrigued by it, even drummers, you know, Buddy Rich and stuff like that. Um, another one, I probably should have mentioned this one first because this was when I was a little kid, was the Kiss Alive 2 album. The one that opens up and Peter Chris is on the big drum riser and there's smoke and flames. That was a huge influence because I was always intrigued by Kiss as a youngster. Just They were like the package uh, band. I mean, exciting band to see. And the whole thing with them wearing makeup, I remember as a kid just like, man, is there going to be any pictures of Kiss without makeup? Are we ever going to see what these dudes look like? Well, we know now. And then they now they put their makeup back on. Go figure. Kiss is great. Iconic. Um, I had, you guys have heard me say I've, I got all the Kiss albums. I had the Kiss lunch pail, the Kiss cards that got stolen at school, elementary school. Um, just lots of different Kiss stuff. And I was a big Ace Freely fan. Um, you know, I remember being so stoked when the solo album came out, Ace Freely solo album, but I ended up buying all of them and liked them all. Back in the New York groove, man. Um, so next, I'm going to say the rest of these I had already been playing. No, that's not necessarily true. 
that's not true. Um, there's one in this list that I hadn't been playing it. But the next one that I wrote down here is uh, Yingui Malmsteen's Rising Force, and that's the the album that uh, had Jeff Scott Soto on vocals. Now, um, I'd actually heard a band that Malmsteen was in called Steeler just prior to, but when the Rising Force album came out, oh my God, um, the impact that Malmsteen had on me, you know, when I first started playing was just tremendous. Um, it's just how it is. Um, and I still love his playing. There's a story behind him, but uh, I'll save it for another day. Um, next, I would say Stevie Ray Vaughan in Step. Um, I remember I was teaching in uh, Southern California in the Inland Empire area. Probably had only been for a couple of years of teaching and the other guitar teacher, they're a good player um, and, and good guy too. But uh, we were both intrigued by each other's playing. And he was a little more of a jazzy guy than I was. I was a little, he was like a jazzy, bluesy rock. I was more rock, you know, rock metal, bluesy, and jazz is my weakest area. I love it, but it, I mean, I'm, I'm just leveling with you. I'm not, I'm not like an advanced jazz player. I'm not. But I encourage you to listen to jazz. Listen to everything. But uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan just, wow. Um, rocked my world in the blues realm. There's so many, it's hard, El Fermi, to, to say my most memorable, but I, I didn't want to keep growing this list. I, I mean, I left out a band in my favorite current bands, you know. I was asked, like, what do I like? And Avenged Sevenfold, <clears throat> I forgot to say them. And, um, you know, primarily for the music, for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the singing. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But the guitar players are, are good, and, and, and in this current music scene where people are stealing stuff and beats off the internet, never touching an instrument, recording all their stuff off of other people's pre-recorded ideas, to me that's, excuse me, but crap. It, it, it gets me mad. Um, what's it going to be like in 50 years, man? Are no one going to be playing instruments anymore? I don't think so, but it's like it, you start thinking like that. You know, what happened to the days where everyone picks up their instrument and learns how to play it through, you know, trial and error and patience and getting frustrated and then the joy and, and everything. So, um, yeah, kind of diverted from the topic there, but I had to get that out there. <clears throat> and it's not like I'm not a fan of people like Eminem, which is another one that should have been in that that last video I did. I think Eminem is genius. Um, and not like I'm a huge hip-hop fan, but I appreciate everything that has some heart in it. There's something to be gleaned off of it. That's the way I see it. So yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, and, and I was obviously listening to Hendrix and stuff too. Um, but I remember hearing Stevie Ray Vaughan's version of Little Wing and just being floored. Just like I was not too many months ago when I had one of the, the custom video tab lessons for Blaze, where it was Eric Gale's version of Little Wing. Wow. I mean, I'm kind of on an Eric Gale's kick now, too. Um, but anyways, uh, next, um, a band maybe half of you will know, if that, um, called King's X. And they had a song called, or an album called Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. I liked all of King's X's albums from the first one, you know, Out of the Silent Planet. Uh, go figure, because you listen to it. If you don't hear a Beatles influence mixed with a little Stevie Wonder or something, it's, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but King's X is phenomenal. Three piece band, Doug Pinnock, another one of my favorite singers. He'd be in the top three for sure. So, King's X, yeah, Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. And it's hard, like I said, just to pick one album, but I, I, have, I wanted to at least put it out there because that was your question, what are my most memorable albums? And that came at a pivotal point in my playing as well. I'd been playing for a couple of years, you know, I already had the Beatles influence, I liked the groove with rock and all that, and they, they were the package there. Um, next, and like I said, they're not in any order, Striper, Yellow and Black Attack, the first album, um, the rawness of it. They got more and more produced as time went on, just like Def Leppard did. Speaking of Def Leppard, the Pyromania album. I didn't even list that. Very pivotal, because it was one of my first albums. Um, the next one, Ozzy Osbourne, Diary of a Madman, which is not only my favorite album, but it would probably be my favorite song, period. Anything with Randy Rhodes was fabulous, amazing. But something about Diary of a Madman and... and 
the eeriness of the chords that Randy's using, his approach to soloing, his flair, just beautifully eerie. And if any of you younger cats, because I'm sure the older guys have heard this, go listen to Diary of a Madman. Not Diarrhea of a Madman, because Ozzy had that too, until he had it fixed. And, uh, just kidding. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, okay. Another one that probably maybe only 20% of you will know who he is, his name's Alan Holdsworth. Um, and I think 1986 he had an album called Metal Fatigue. How I heard about Alan Holdsworth, because I mentioned earlier I was a huge, and I still am, Eddie Van Halen fan. And I remember reading, there used to be Circus Magazine, Hit Parader Magazine. You guys my age know what I'm talking about, man. I couldn't wait for the new one to come out. And um, there was an interview with Eddie talking about, they were, you know, he's always asked about tapping and this and that. And Eddie was actually humble and I uh, was like, you know what, I'm just trying to, to this is paraphrased because it's, this is way back. I'm just trying to play what Alan Holdsworth is doing with one hand using two. And I was like, okay, if Eddie Van Halen says somebody's good and influenced him, I'm going to listen to that person. Because look at the results that came out of Eddie. That's just, you know, in my mind how I looked at it. And Alan Holdsworth, amazing man. Real long skinny fingers, amazing player. Uh, but the album, I, I I had a few of them, but Metal Fatigue was the first one, and that was pivotal. I was probably 16 years old when that came out. been playing for, you know, three years or whatever. Um, go check that out. Um, another one. Oh, I, I skipped one, you guys. Dokken, Under Lock and Key. Now, I heard them when Breaking the Chains came out, the first album, and I knew I liked George Lynch right off the bat. But when Under Lock and Key came out, you know, you had In My Dreams. And the solo to that that makes your hair stand up. Um, George Lynch, huge fan of him. And uh, more so Lynch, you know, I liked Don Dawkins' voice. You know, I wasn't like, you know, well, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to say anything like negative or nothing. Dawkins was great. Um, and that would probably be the pivotal album for me would be Under Lock and Key. Of course, I got him after that, you know, back for the attack and, I'm forgetting one of the other ones. What was the one that had a... Uh, when Heaven Comes Down. Is that under lock and key? I can't remember. But anyways, you know, you guys know who Lynch is, that's for sure. Um, another one, kind of like a close brother to the Dawkins album and around the same time frame would be Rat um, Out of the Cellar <clears throat> and Invasion of Your Privacy, but I've been playing for probably four four years at that point. I put down Out of the Cellar. Great album. Warren Demartini. Right there with George Lynch. People have debated it back and forth over the years. Who's better, Lynch or Demartini? Come on, man. They're both amazing. That's just end of discussion. Um, okay, I have three more. If you guys uh, want to hear them, here they are. Scorpions, Blackout. That album... Man, I'll tell you, I don't know if it was because I was in German class and <laughs> around that time in school or what it was. No, it wasn't that. Matthias Jabs, one of my favorite guitar players too, may surprise you guys. You don't hear a lot of uh, other guitar players credit him and he's, he's fabulous. He's like Michael Schenker, but a little different. He was my favorite for years. Matthias Jabs, the Blackout album, which is my personal favorite album from them. I think it's when they really, really hit it big in America with Blackout and Can't Live Without You. You know, it had Dynamite on it, China White. Uh, just the whole album is killer. So is Love at First Sting, for that matter. And you can go back before Matthias to the Uli John Roth years of Scorpions, which I have Fly to the Rainbow. And, you know, but I heard them with Matthias first, did the research, like reading in magazines. Oh, they had another guitar player? I gotta hear this. They even had Michael Schenker on the Love Drive album. Was it the Love Drive or, yeah, or Animal Magnetism? I think it was Love Drive. And, um, but yeah, Uli John Roth, like a Jimi Hendrix, Robin Trower type player. Um, the next album, um, what type of a man, what type of musician would I be to not credit Led Zeppelin? The album may surprise you or it may not. I loved everything from Zeppelin. But a pivotal one for me, because that was kind of your question, my most mem memorable albums, would be Ze Led Zeppelin 1. The one with Communication Breakdown, Dazed and Confused, Good Times, Bad Times, Zeppelin and its rawness, just so amazing. 
um, that album, just I listened to it so much, man, I ended up having to go buy another album. It would get scratched off the record player, and I think I ruined my brother's album, and I ended up having my mom go replace it so he wouldn't, like, beat me up and be pissed, you know? And uh, so anyways, Jimmy Page, you know, icon, amazing, one of the all-time, um, you know, like I said, Zeppelin obviously was heavier than the Beatles, um, but they're just, boom, like this with me. And everything else is a little bit down lower. That's just where I'm at. And the last one I would say um, would be Steve Vai, um, the album Flexible, which was his first solo album, I believe. Um, Steve Vai used to play in Frank Zappa's band. Zappa had a lot of different players, Bozio on drums. But um, any anyone that comes out of a Zappa situation has got to be a little twisted in a good way. I don't know how else to put it, but you guys that listen to Vi know what I'm talking about. The Flexible album and, you know, Little Green Man, all that stuff. And, you know, what was the other one? Passion and Warfare. I mean, I've always been a, a, a Vi follower. He's He inspires me to become a better guitar player. Um... But I just listened to, to that album like crazy. As a matter of fact, I think I had like a guitar player magazine. And for you older cats, um, if you or 80s cats, I'll say, I don't know if you remember back in the day, in, in the, I, th I think it was Guitar Player Magazine, but I'm not positive. They had those little floppy albums. It was like 45 size, which for you younger guys would be a little bigger than a CD. But it was like floppy. You can bend it and stuff. You could damage it if you keep doing it. But that came in one of the, the magazines. I'm pretty sure it was Guitar Player. Um, and I put that on my record player. First I was like, is this even going to work? What the hell is this? All my other albums are like this. And then I had a couple 45s, but what is this floppy thing? And uh, another, this is kind of off topic, but my my cousin Tim Sage, uh, I remember him telling me, you got to hear this, this song. And he had one too. This is right around, probably before I found the Vi one, but it was that uh, Ram Jam. Black Betty was a child, and I remember him telling me what the words were, and he was just busting up. I went to his house, and we were listening to it, and just cracking up. So, But those never really were, like, super popular. I think they just came with the magazines and stuff. But that's that's how I first heard Steve Vai. And, you know, and do you guys remember the movie he did, Crossroads, with the uh, Karate Kid, Ralph Macchio? I found that on eBay. I had to buy it. I know you can watch this stuff on YouTube, but some things I just got to have the hard copy. That's that's how I am, old school or whatever. I like hard copies. I liked albums. Um, I like to read all the stuff. Nowadays, everything's so digital that people will buy one song from this album on you know iTunes, another song from this, which is cool. You build up your library. But for you younger guys that didn't get to grow up like that, where you could not wait for your favorite bands, not hit single but for their whole album and I would sit down and listen to that whole album from beginning to end obviously I had my favorites but it was a treat it felt like a real treat the computer age which I'm a part of too now um, grafted in man with technology and how times change um, like I said it, you can just pick this pick that pick that anything you want boom it's right there on the computer um, you know even for lessons back in the day which I wanted and wasn't able to get my cousin Charlie was able to, I remember being so bummed out. But you know, it was a, a treat. You know, you get to go see your guitar teacher, hang out, do your lesson, have him teach you whatever songs, you know, which he was doing with my cousin. I remember he came back playing No One Like You from the Scorpions, and I was like, you got to show me that now. You know, but it's just interesting how times have changed. That should be another video, though. I've hit all of them, guys, and probably after I upload this, I'll probably go, why did I not bring this up? But I put a little thought into it, man, because the Beatles, you guys know I love, Van Halen, you know, Fair Warning is another great album, but these were the pivotal ones, all of them that I list, listed here, were very pivotal to me in one way, shape, or form, and I don't have enough time on this video to explain it. So I'm out. I'll talk to you guys soon. Go to rockinguitarlessons.com. Go to the Skype page if you're interested in some private instruction for guitar, bass, or vocals. Fill out the contact information so we can keep you in the loop as well as when you make a request. That's all I request is that you fill out that contact information. Mike at rockingguitarlessons.com is my email. Uh, PayPal email is tvxpunk at aol.com if you would like to donate. No pressure. If you can't, don't do it by any means. 
Um, for those of you that have, thank you, and I do appreciate it. And for those of you that couldn't, I appreciate you too, my subscribers. You guys are my peeps, my students. So rock on, guys. Keep the questions coming, and I'll keep these coming back at you and the lessons as well. See you guys.